So I've done a couple of videos recently where I've been musing on kind of like what's the future direction for my home theater. For the longest time, my my grail piece, the, the item that I would be jonesing after the most would be a JVC NZ9 projector, go all the way up to the high end, that $25,000 projector. Um, and I'm well aware of, of add-ons for your projection setup, lenses, Lumigen, MadVR. I had I had been kind of defaulting mentally to the idea that, well, I would put more of my money just into the higher end projector and be all set and not add the complexity, kind of not add the other stuff. But then M-Wave happened and I've been privy to a lot of discussion and some more exposure lately to the idea of, well, maybe, maybe there's something to the concept of buying a less expensive projector because the actual performance differences or whatnot between like a premium unit and a super premium unit for the amount of money that some of these uh, projector makers charge, maybe it's not really there. And you're better off spending less on the unit, the projector unit itself, and instead go ahead and, 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 and add the Mad VR and get all of the advantages and such that those devices allow for and do in an environment, particularly one where you have a scope screen, an ultra widescreen screen, and you wanna be you know zooming up the middle, the, the, the movie portion, itself instead of having that in a 16-9 space and black bars above and below. That's what I do in my room. I have a 163-inch scope screen, and right now I've, I've been using projector zoom modes, uh, installation modes, and lens memories to set 16-9 versus wider, fill more of the screen and all that. And I've made videos on how I do that and, and with my Control 4 system. I have felt personally a lot less of a pressure or maybe a lot less of a need to, to really even concern myself too much with the idea of a lens, the idea of a Lumigen, Mad VR, and all of that. And I think I've come to the reason why. And it's the fact that I have a Kaleidoscape. There's something very powerful about the combination of a, a well-automated projector, a Control 4 system tying everything together, or you know, an automation system tying everything together, and having Kaleidoscape such that Kaleidoscape does a lot of the things already that people would be looking to have the processor do not in exactly the same way, but to me, I feel in a way that's like enough for me. And, and that, that leads to the idea why I haven't really put a lot of credence or I haven't been like, oh, like I really want to get this. I really need this processor. I really want to add this lens. Because so that stuff adds a lot of cost. Very expensive. You know, 13, 14 grand for a Mad VR, several thousand dollars for a lens. You're almost at $20,000 just to do that. You're within a few thousand dollars of just buying the NZ9. All that said, let's go through a couple of specific reasons why kind of Kaleidoscape does the things that these processors would do in conjunction with other system elements like an automated projector in an automation system. I think one of the main things that people are looking for a video processor and the whole lens setup to do is to be able to manage those aspect ratios, to be able to have the processor detect black bars and provide like the right uh, and proper anamorphic uh, squishing and uh, and processing of the image such that when it's thrown through the lens it fills the right portions of the screen and it gets the image everywhere or that it's supposed to be or keeps it from being anywhere that it's not supposed to be certainly where like a mad VR would be you know quote unquote a superior solution or Lumigen would be a superior solution for doing that because you end up using more of your panel you end up retaining more of your brightness onto the screen, out of the projector. It all happens automatically, with particularly with a Mad VR, right? It happens very fast. The processor picks up on, on what's happening, what the image is, and makes the, makes the squishing or makes the expand, you know, all of the different things that it needs to do to get the image the right way. However, Kaleidoscape is already sending the metadata cues from a movie. So I start playback on a given movie. Kaleidoscape is telling my control system, hey, this is 16.9. This is 185 to 1. It's 235 to 1. So those cues get to my Control 4 controller, and the Control 4 controller says, okay, projector, go into this installation mode. Switch over to this lens memory to match the aspect ratio, the zooming right for the proper aspect ratio that the Kaleidoscape is playing. And I don't have to do anything. I don't have to touch any remotes. The thing that kind of sucks is I have to sit there and wait about 15 seconds largely in the dark with the JVC while things are shifted and moved and, and, and everything happens the way that it needs to happen. And yeah, that's kind of a pain. But if I watch a movie or two a week, that shifting experience happens twice per film, once when you start it 
and potentially even only once when you're going back to the menu when you're done watching the movie. Is 30 seconds worth $20,000 twice a week? I don't know. I don't think so. At the end, I still get the image the way that I want it on my screen with the system that I have. And again, with the Kaleidoscape, I don't have to do anything to get it there. It just happens. Of course, a Mad VR or Lumigen would be able to accomplish that zooming and, and, and anamorphic processing and behavior for any type of source. So yes, if I play a movie on the Apple TV, I have to kind of manually set where I want things to go. But I'm, I'm thinking more about like, I generally watch the bulk of my movies on the Kaleidoscape and this stuff is done for me. So right there, yeah, I'm losing some of that brightness. How much brightness, how much difference does that brightness make? You know, I don't know. I think with a bright enough projector, I'm fine to go without it. And you don't have to also have other complications put in. Lenses can add like barrel distortions and things. And built into processors like Mad VR is the ability to, you're distorting your image and then you can process the distortion out. Well, I don't even have any distortion to begin with. So one of the other pain points that comes with different aspect ratios in a scope screen is where are your subtitles going to show up. Even if you're not using subtitles to actually watch the movie in its entirety, a lot of movies, if you're watching science fiction, alien languages, foreign films, anime, are going to have some amount of four subs that are going to appear that you need to be able to read to follow the film. Generally speaking, a lot of devices just put those subtitles towards the very top or the very bottom of essentially a 16.9 projected image. Kaleidoscape though, in the menus, in the system, understands the subtitles better. It understands, you know, what's what, and it gives you the option uh, within the settings to say, where do you want your subtitles to be? Well, on my Kaleidoscape, I have it set up to always put the subtitles in the actual movie image. So when I'm watching a ultra widescreen movie off my K, the projector's been zoomed up, the bottom of the, the movie's actual image is at the bottom of my screen. I'm never losing any subtitles. Whereas with a processor, Lumigen, a Mad VR, or whatnot, it's going, when it detects those subtitles down in a black space, perhaps, it will end up kind of like squeezing down in order to bring the subtitles onto the screen. It might expand back up or their settings, as I understand it, to kind of squeeze down. If there's a lot of subtitles, then you can stay that way so you're not constantly like packing up and packing down. People might go for a processor to be able to not miss subtitles, but if you have a Kaleidoscape, you're not going to miss any subtitles in your movie. It's going to put all of the subtitles within the movie frame, within the movie image itself, and you're not going to have any of that jumpiness kind of sh shrinking down, expanding back up through the process of actually watching the film. It's going to be solid, stable, fixed once it zooms up at the beginning and stay there the rest of the, the, rest of the content. So another reason people really kind of applaud the video processors is we have some of these situations with films where they have changing aspect ratios, IMAX enhanced stuff. So a movie might be ultra widescreen for the majority of the time, but in certain scenes, you know, Transformers, I think some of the, the Nolan Batman films, Interstellar or whatnot, will go into a 16 by 9 image, which is the, the IMAX recorded higher scenes. And so you have this dynamically changing aspect ratio through the course of the film. If you have a processor like a Lumigen, like a Mad VR, that's detecting that, it can make the changes, it can make sure that it, you know, you're not just statically zoomed in and, and having the taller image now off the top and bottom of your screen while you're zoomed in to accommodate the scope, uh, scope elements. And it makes those switches and it does it automatically and that's all really cool. However, and you could call this maybe a plus or a minus, but most of the Kaleidoscape releases of the movies that are IMAX enhanced, maybe in streaming or on disc, don't do the aspect ratio switching. Kaleidoscape generally doesn't have that, you know, the studio, I don't know if, if they chose it specifically that way, or if the studios just didn't give them that version of the film to integrate in the Kaleidoscape platform. But by and large, the Kaleidoscape version of the movies don't have the aspect ratio switches. And quite honestly, I think that's superior. I like that better. In my opinion, having things change and having things dynamically expand and contract and, and all of that in and out of scenes, to me, kind of like takes me out of it. I think it's better to have a stable aspect ratio, a stable presentation through the entirety of a film rather than being aware that you're watching a movie, right? You want to be pulled into the film. You want to watch the content. You want to enjoy the content. Well, as soon as something majorly significant changes in the field of view and what you're looking at, 
you know you're not you're not in the movie anymore you know you're watching a movie you're not absorbed into the movie the same way maybe that's just me but in my opinion it's a plus that by and large Kaleidoscape doesn't have the aspect ratio switching so if your content doesn't have the aspect ratio switching in it you don't need to have a processor to manage the the expansions and contractions and all of that dynamically i don't feel a need to reintroduce that into my system or that i'm missing anything by virtue of what i have and one of the other things that Kaleidoscape can do that I actually haven't even played with yet is have the ability to kind of manage how you want the menus to be presented. So right now in my system, I present the Kaleidoscape UI in 16.9. And then since we, watch, since we watch a lot of movies, mostly in the theater, a lot of times we are switching to the wider aspect ratio, scope ratio to actually watch a film. However, K lets you in the menus define a 240 to 1 or you know ultra wide home screen and it would send the proper triggers to the control four system and then to the JVC projector to understand if it's in the menus versus if it's in a piece of film and the menus would send its proper aspect ratio as configured. So that's something that I'm going to play with actually very soon, which is I might actually be very, very much better off leaving my KUI in the ultra widescreen aspect ratio itself and have a better chance when I start a movie then that I don't have to wait for any shifting or moving or lens memory uh, adjustment because I'm already in the right one for most of the films that I might actually end up watching. And same thing coming back out of the movie as well, it would just pop right back to the menu and it wouldn't have to shift down or change and all of that. And so once I get that figured out, uh, the details of how to do those menu settings and all of that, I will make a dedicated video about it and comment on if that is actually a superior way to do things. And again, further capitalizes on the need or on the value um, or the lack of a need to have all this extra stuff, extra processing and, and everything kind of, you know, in there to begin with. And then the last thing I'll say, particularly with my setup, right? A lot of people um, take value from a Lumigen, a MadVR video processor because of its tone mapping. And, and maybe those devices do have the most superior tone mapping, HDR, tone mapping of any devices available to us. But that's a lot to, to spend, I think, in my opinion, just to get better tone mapping, just by a JVC. The tone mapping is built in, it works with any source, it works with the Kaleidoscape, and how much better you know, is a processor's tone mapping than the JVC built-in tone mapping? I don't know, I can't say specifically because I have not experienced it for myself in a, you know, in, in a room, in a same space, comparing A to B, but is it going to be twice as good? I don't know. I would have my doubts. Is it going to be 50% better? I don't know. I, I kind of have my doubts. My expectation would be that it might be better, but marginally so. And maybe not even enough to justify, again, more complexity, more cost in your system, these extra devices and all of that. Versus, again, going back to my original uh, assumption, so, I guess, just buy the better projector and, and, and have these other things and integrate them together. And you get all of these, all of these functionalities, features, and capabilities without, you know, without that other stuff. And in some ways, I'm a little bit afraid of putting a lens and all of that in the way uh, of my of my light path of my projector and my video path because I've got the gaming PC, and I, I would like to be able to use the gaming PC in the theater. And the gaming PC itself has a lot of configuration and options and, and things to set and do with regards to games. A lot of new games actually have just a very easy menu toggle to be able to put them from, or, or put them into ultra wide aspect ratios. God of War does it, the new Spider-Man does it. I'm really eager to, to try that out in the theater. And so I don't want having the, the lens always in the light path of my projector for the benefit of movies potentially, or the, the potential benefit of movies to compromise my gaming experience. So that, that's a specific consideration for me. And then the other thing I'll say uh, with regards to like getting more light and, and getting, getting a, a bigger image, getting all that stuff out of your projectors, the other thing I did recently is, the, is zoom the projector to its full native resolution. So I have a JVC. JVCs are 4096 um, instead of 3840. When you put the projector in its zoom mode to fill the full width of that, of that pixel dimension, you also zoom up and down a little bit. You effectively get a bigger image. It helps me fill more of my screen for a very, 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 very small upscaling. And so I'm already getting a little bit more light. 
a little bit more value out of an ultra widescreen image as it is with this setup with the JVC because I have more lit pixels um, on the screen. And as bright as some of these new lasers are, like getting up to a JVC NZ8, or maybe if I can go all the way at some point and get to an NZ9, man, that's a lot of light. At that point, zooming up, I think I'm gonna be perfectly fine in my room. The, the light difference from doing the lens and doing the setup and all of that, it will add more for sure, but do I functionally or really, will I really, really, really effectively need it? Probably not. I think I would have more than enough light out of zooming a JVC NZ9. As it is, zooming my JVC NX7 onto this size of screen with a bulb that has a thousand hours on it feels and looks pretty bright. <laughs> so in our comparisons that we did from the NX to the LS12000, to the LS myself and other folks that I have over, in certain scenes, yeah, you could note the brightness and it would be nicer to have a brighter projector for sure but lack of brightness by, was by no means degrading the experience. A, a lot of the reason I think, after really thinking it through and thinking why haven't I had a major draw to, 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 to go after these video processors to really worry about a lens and, and what was really behind that, and it's the reality that I have a working system with automation, control, and integration that already does a lot of the stuff that that processor would do. Again, maybe not as well in every aspect of it, but it does it really great. Why take on the extra cost in complexity? That said, if I get a chance to get my hands on a lens to try something out, to get my hands on a Lumigen or a Mad VR, I'm definitely gonna take it. I wanna be able to see some of those differences directly myself. If I can travel around, see some things, I'm very, very eager to learn more, see more, and experience more. Maybe that'll change my opinion, but ultimately at the end of the day right now, I'm pretty darn happy with what I have. Sound off in the comments, let me know what you think. You know, I think we all kind of have finite money and we're talking about stuff, these projectors, these lenses, these processors, the Kaleidoscape, you know, tens of thousands of dollars, boom, 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 for every single one of them. This is a lot of money. The stuff adds up. And I'm assuming that for myself and a lot of folks, you know, it's a shell game. If I'm going to put some upgrades into my system, I've got a fixed amount of money and I can't buy everything. So I need to decide exactly where I'm going to put my money, how I'm going to spend it and what I'm going to buy with it. And and what, what features, capabilities, and levels of quality of those features and capabilities am I going to get? It's big decisions to make, especially when we don't get the opportunity to experience all of these things so directly firsthand ourselves. So let me know what you think. Please do all the regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Look down in the description for some ways to support the channel. And come on back for more home theater discussion and fun.